Why, hello there. My name is Mountain, and today I'd like to talk to you about this. And what is this, you might ask? Well, this is the Bellroy Melbourne Pack, 18 liters. It's designed, I think, as a compact, relatively minimal, urban use bag for people with lighter EDC loadouts. And this is a use case that I think has increased dramatically in this new COVID world we live in, where people are telecommuting more, going out socially less, and when they do go out, they're just carrying less stuff. I think the bag's main claim to fame might be its overall smaller size, as well as its quick access via this top magnetic flap and deep access via this asymmetrical side zipper that lets you really get into the bottom of the bag. Conversely, I think its main disadvantage might be its overall, I would say, average execution, at least by Bellroy standards, and below average organization and pocketing situation, as well as a kind of tightness to the bag. This is a small pack that feels small. Now, let's look at a quick overview of this bag. As I mentioned, it's a compact, slim bag. It is very slim, actually, um, that's ideal for kind of this new COVID world. It's available in two sizes. This is the 18 liter, and there's also a smaller 12 liter that's just shorter vertically, and in three different colors and material ways. The materials uh, differ slightly according to which color you choose. The 18 liters is slim, but in my opinion, it's doable both for people with smaller frames and for people of average height and build. Interpret that how you will. Although I think this bag is gonna look pretty um, small if you're a particularly tall individual or if you're a person you know, who's a little bit more muscular or whatever. Um, the 12 liter bag is gonna to be too small, I think, except for people with petite frames. It has some organization on the bag, uh, not too much externally, just a couple of little pockets and some organization internally, which we'll get into. But overall, it's not, I would say, provided with enough pockets for what I think its use case requires. The top magnetic flap, flap is fussy when you kind of close it under load, it often will catch the side like this or kind of look a little bit odd and wrinkled, but it's very fast to get into and for the most part out of by closing it, I mean. And then this side zipper panel, as I mentioned before, is pretty good for when you want to set the bag down and really load it. It kind of alleviates one of the problems you often find with bags of this kind of top opening nature, which is it's hard to get into the bottom of the bag. One thing that I think is worth mentioning is this bag actually collects a fair amount of fuzz. It's actually hard to see. clean it off a little bit for this video, but um, while this is not usually something I have a problem with with bags, I did notice that a lot on this bag, it just makes it look a little bit dirty um, or sloppy. It might be different with some of the other material ways, but the black at least gets a lot of fuzz like right away. The bag can be coaxed to stand up on its own, but you have to really load it out with a top or a bottom heavy kind of loadout on purpose to make it do that. So it's not really easy to um, actually make it stand up without a lot of work. And then the bag doesn't have a sternum strap. The shoulder straps are pretty thin. The overall construction of this bag is pretty slight, which I guess is fitting for an 18 liter bag, but you do notice it, um, especially if you have a bunch of different bags, you'll quickly notice the areas where they really kind of went with like adequate, I would say, uh, build materials or selection, design, etc. in this bag. And there's a few key places where normally you would expect to find some elastic on the bag that it doesn't have or flex in the bag, it doesn't have, it's just like a hard, hard um, design. And that really makes this bag feel constrictive at times. So next, let's talk about who this bag is for and who it's not for. So first of all, this bag's bread and butter is gonna be for kind of urban dwellers who are looking for like a bag that carries their lighter loads and nothing really more. So it's just, just the right size for like a smaller load. Like that's really where this bag excels. Um, this bag is another great choice for people who are, you know, as I mentioned, kind of smaller frames. It's very hard to find bags that are sized appropriately for people for smaller frames because generally they're aimed at like the average height uh, market. And it's easy to find a lot of bigger bags, but again, smaller bags are farther and fewer in between. This one and the 12 liter version are gonna be great for that. And fans of the semi-professional casual Bellroy aesthetic, um, I think this is a good looking understated bag and that can make it both in a city and in most casual workplaces, I would say. Maybe if you're working like in an investment bank, this is not gonna cut it, but for most of us, this is a pretty good looking bag, I think. Now, it's not for people who need to carry a lot of bulky things, including gym clothes, uh, but also things like a thicker laptop. Um, this has a laptop compartment, but it's, again, no flex, and it's pretty thin, so actually you're not gonna be able to jam like a big honking laptop in here. Um, if you're carrying like big earphones or whatever, you're gonna quickly fill up the, vo the volume of this bag faster than you might expect. People who need to carry heavier things, the strap system of this bag is not really made for anything kind of heavy or even moderately heavy, you're gonna really not enjoy yourself after a little bit. So I wouldn't recommend the bag for this. 
it's not for any kind of outdoor stuff, which might be obvious, but maybe bears um, mentioning. And as you can see right here, as I flip the bag around, this top flap opened up naturally. And that's why I also don't think this bag is great for travel. It doesn't, I would not put it in a situation where it's kind of horizontal because it's very easy for the contents to spill out and for this flap to kind of work its way out uh, open without any pressure, really. It's very easy to flip open. Um, also, obviously, pickpockets, pick pockets, et cetera, if you travel to places the world where they're there, so that's a concern. So next, let's talk about the exterior appearance of this bag. I've already talked about kind of the fuzziness of the material on the black, which I'm not really thrilled about, but you know, again, maybe if you choose one of the other colorways and material ways, you may not have this problem as much. It is possible to make the bag stand up. I've already talked about this, but to do so, you really have to load some kind of heavy stuff at the bottom of the bag that kind of fills up the whole depth of the bag and kind of push it in there and then you know kind of make sure you don't have too much stuff up here and then kind of carefully squish it down a bit and then it'll stand up a lot of bags that are designed to stand up naturally on their own are just going to be built like that this bag is not are going to be built so they can stand up regardless of how you load them out this bag is not one of those things it is a very flat i think you can see here it's a very flat bag it's kind of a broad bag, which you can see is very broad. And it has this sort of squidge, I don't know how to say, like maybe if we look from this angle, you can see the, the bag's edges kind of come out in a triangle like this. Um, let's see if we can make it show on camera like this. So you have the size of the bag and then they kind of point out like this very naturally under load and when you're wearing it. So it's an interesting aesthetic. I like that it looks relatively flat and small on your back without looking tiny. A lot of smaller bags, Thinking like, for example, the Arcteryx Blade 6, or I think the um, Air has like, I forget what it's called, but it has a very, they have a very small, um, you know, slim pack. And it, it's, they look very small on the back. This one, because it has sort of like the flared corners, even though they are flat, and a little bit of this like squidgy triangle bulge on the sides, um, it doesn't look inappropriate when an average height person is wearing this bag, in my opinion, but also doesn't look overpowering when a smaller frame person is wearing this bag here. Um, the material has not a lot of flex, and not only that, the bag has um, areas where you would normally expect to find elastic, but you don't have elastic, and as a result, it's very tight. So one of the key examples is right here on the side of the external water bottle pocket. This is a sewn bar, bar tack, bar stitch, and there's no flex here. You can't expand this. The only way it expands is by pushing into the interior uh, volume of the bag. Another area where you might find, I know we're talking about the exterior of the bag, but maybe uh, to prove the point, like usually you will find elastic at the top of like a laptop compartment or a tablet compartment, but here it's just sewn flat. So there's no, there's no elastic here. You have, the only way you can get more space in here is to kind of bulge the bag like this. You can kind of see and then you can cram something in there, but there's no elastic, which is, is strange. And there's a few other places in the bag where I noticed this as well. Um, it's, the end result is unlike, for example, the Bellroy Transit Work Pack that I previously covered, which is a bag you could easily overstuff, this bag can't be overstuffed. Like it will quickly reach its limits. And then the weakness of the top flap magnets means that if you try and overstuff it at the top, you can kind of see like it just releases without um, you even trying here. Uh, I think that the one, I don't know, saving grace, the one thing to note is that the back of the bag has, let's see if we can see it in profile here. You can kind of see there's a rounding of how this bag is on the back. And that's part of that kind of triangular edge flare that I talked about before. So when you do put a lot of stuff in the bag, it does round out a little bit in the back and on the sides like this. You can see the side panel here on the back is kind of rounded a bit here, right here I'm talking about. And so that does let it accommodate some depth in this dimension at the expense, albeit, of like vertical stability on the back, because obviously the more it rounds out, the less surface space you have kind of pressing against your back on the bag, on, uh, on your back from the bag, excuse me. Um, the rest of the materials of this bag, and I think I mentioned this in the outset, are adequate. The fabric is fine. It's not the best the Bellroy has to offer. It's not, I don't know if it's not the worst that they don't have, but it's not like a terrible bag. It feels, you know, to that level that you expect from most Bellroy products. The leather is okay, although the one thing I did kind of feel was like this leather, I'm assuming it's leather, on the 
underside of the magnetic flap feels really cheap. It almost feels like pleather, like plastic leather. I don't know if that's the case or not. It sort of has like a sort of grain on the bottom. So I'm assuming it's leather, but I'm not sure. Um, the straps on the back here are very simple. They narrow a lot, which I'll talk about in a second, but they're just, you know, they're not fantastic. There's nothing fancy going on where they're attached. They're just they're enough. The top handle, same story again, just enough. Um, nothing fancy here, just a simple piece of sewn over um, nylon strapping. Uh, overall, I think that's sort of the story of this bag is like it's adequate and not bad, but not fantastic. And I've already talked about, I think, the fuzziness of this fabric. Um, speaking of the straps and the handles here, actually, let's talk about those. So there's only, you know, this back, um, these back straps here, they narrow very aggressively, which is something that you see like on the transit, um, the transit 28 liter, the travel bag, not the work pack, where you just get this really aggressive narrowing. I don't like it when Bellroy does this. I don't know why they do it on some of their bags and not others of their bags, but in general, it's not uncomfortable because again, this is a pretty small bag, but it just kind of looks, I don't know, it looks a little bit, for me, not that great. And I wish they were just a little bit wider down with a less aggressive taper. No sternum strap. Um, then the edges are fine. They're, you know, just sort of this sewn over with this piping and it, it's okay. It's okay. Um, it's got a little bit of hard material in here, though not nearly as reinforced as the Transit Work Pack, which I previously, um, you know, reviewed. It's very easy to fold these over. I think it's almost feels, it's not cardboard, but maybe a little bit of stiffness and then some decent foam. Not super cushioned, but it doesn't maybe have to be for this loadout. Um, aluminum hardware here, which is nice. I like that. And then kind of built in strap keepers, which is also nice. Although these are plastic strap keepers, which isn't my favorite, but it's fine for this. Overall, fine is sort of the story here. The uh, back panel while we're on it is a design that we've seen in other Bellroy bags. Not a lot of ventilation to speak of. There's theoretically a little channel here, but this is just too soft and flat. Um, there is a frame sheet, but it's super soft. So again, under heavy load, this bag is completely inadequate, but it's only 18 liters. So it's not likely that you'll put that much weight in there. Um, and I did kind of mention that, you know, if you do super load out the bag, it kind of bulges out here. So then you have less surface area. And because it's a wider bag, if you have a lot of bulky stuff in here, it can tend to wobble a little bit on your back. But in most everyday use, I didn't find that to be a problem. Um, my sweaty back uh, homies, you might not love the lack of ventilation sort of closeness to your back on this one. For me, I don't mind it, but it's also winter here. So maybe that's partially why I don't really care. The top strap is again, adequate, simple, piece of thin folded over nylon, not particularly like elaborately well stitched, but it's adequate. I don't like carrying this bag like this for any kind of extended period of time because of the thinness of the strap. Um, but again, you know, for what it is adequate. Next, let's talk about the exterior pockets of this bag. And it's pretty simple. There are only two. One of them is the water bottle pocket, which I previously talked about. Um, I'm glad it has a water bottle pocket. It fits, um, you know, most standard sized, um, water bottles, I would say. This is a, actually, this is a, what? It says 18 ounce, this is an 18 ounce purist water bottle, about 500 milliliters or so, I'm guessing. Um, if it's fine in there, it doesn't look too, you know, weirdly out of place. Um, one thing I will note is that because the interior fabrics of this bag are just cloth, there's not like slippery, smooth nylon or anything. It's just sort of this, I don't know, maybe this is a type of nylon, but it's a very, like the interior is definitely like a kind of cloth lining there's some friction when you put the water bottle in. So when the bag is not very filled out, as this one is not, this is what I would say would be a normal, typical load for a bag like this. It's relatively easy to get the water bottle in, take it out. If the bag is packed out, which uh, maybe I can, I will show you later. Actually, maybe I'll show you now. If we were to take this bag and put in, say, a heavier load out, this is a Civic Access panel, a Civic Access pouch, two liter from Evergoods. So this is a little bit more. Now it's packed out. Um, you're going to find that you have a lot. It actually won't go down, right? Because there's no, because the civic access pouch takes up the whole width. So there's no way to kind of, you know, get it in there. You can see it's caught. And that's again, where I would say like, I would expect there to be a bit of elastic here so that it can gust it out. And you can work it in there, but it doesn't have it. And this is a smaller pack that feels small as soon as you start to brush up against its limitations, I would say. Um, the only other exterior pocket on this bag is actually located on the back in the side here. 
and it's this locking, uh, locking means lock flat, and not locking, locking, um, waterproof, I guess, YK, uh, yes, YKK zipper. And you can, it's like sort of like their quick access pouch. And I choose to keep my, my keys in here. Um, and the problem that I have with this, I mean, I guess you can also keep your phone in there, but the problem I have with this pocket is, um, here's the frame sheet of the bag. And then there's like a, a lip or an edge right here. Uh, right, right here where the, the bag's frame sheet and you can already see like kind of the sewing of the edge of it is. And what happens a lot is um, you try to get your keys in there or whatever and you often run into the lip of this, of this edge of, this, of the bag and you kind of have to work your way around it. Especially, especially if you've got the bag slung over one shoulder which is often how you would use a quick access pouch. You have to kind of fight because it creates this tension with the back panel. You have to kind of fight your way around it, get it out, and then fight your way around it and get it back in. Once you're actually inside of this quick access panel, um, it's quite spacious. Let me see, let me put my keys over here. Um, it's quite spacious. I don't know if we can actually see. And it's got this stretch mesh on the inside, which Bellroy uses for a lot of their kind of, you know, quick access pouches like this, or pockets like this. You can see this is the inside. And so there's this mesh area here. This is all the pocket from the outside. And so it actually will accommodate, I would say like a phone or a wallet or anything like that. It's relatively secure given the friction of the zipper, the YKK kind of waterproof zipper, the lock flat low profile zipper pull, and the fact that it's lined up against your back. But the maybe, you know, price you pay is like, you do have to kind of wrestle your way around this lip in and out. And again, the same caveat that applies to the water bottle pocket also applies to this. When the bag is packed out more fully, it's very, very hard to find the right amount of flex. You really are fighting against the, the lack of flex in this fabric here to try and get your stuff in and out of there if the bag is packed out full. Another area where I would have wished there was a little bit more flex on the outside, although again, on the inside, there's flex. Um, so that's that. And that's it for the exterior pockets of this bag. Moving on to the front flap, I've already talked about this, or to access of this back, I should say. I've already talked a little bit about this, but it closes and opens with these two magnets here. You can see here, and it's very fast to kind of open and close. Um, I like this, and I think this is one of the better features of the bag in terms of just how quick it is to just you know, grab something in and then not even kind of have to really worry about it. Let me try that again. Really easy to get into the bag like this. You have a nice, quick, clear view. You can see if you look from the top. So if you've got the bag slung around your shoulder, it's easy to flip this open and you can see right into the contents of that bag here like this. Um, the flap is also very soft. So that helps like, again, if you've got it slung around your shoulder, you can easily, you know, just kind of roll it back or scrunch it back and it gets way out of your way. Now the downside to that is sometimes, and you can see this is sort of happening here, um, it's very easy for the bag to kind of get, when you close it quickly, to kind of get caught up. So you have like this weird kind of, you know, the edge is kind of caught up or opened like this or something like that. And this happens, I would say, probably one out of every three times I'm closing the bag, especially if I'm closing the bag quickly or on the go, um, you know, at a weird angle or something. Usually when it's, you know, caught over my shoulder or if it's filled up, like it's very easy to kind of get caught like this. Um, it's annoying. It's fussy. It's not... Fatal, I would say, but I do find myself, like I said, maybe one out of every three times having to like manually, sorry, straighten out the bag after I close it, but very, very quick. The other main feature of this access panel is, as I mentioned, or this access to the bag is this asymmetrical side zip. I like the zipper, it's low profile, and the zipper pull is big enough with a loop here that it's very easy to pull it when you want to open it, but it stays out of the way when you're not trying to open it. And that's a probably all you can ask for, for a kind of like side zipper panel like this. Now this only one side, this side doesn't have it. Um, and I think that's probably a decent choice for a bag this size because um, you really don't need to fillet this bag open, especially because there's not a ton of interior organization, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. Um, so, you know, I don't use this at all when I'm on the go. When I'm outside, I hardly ever use it. I use this more for like when I'm just packing out the bag, um, you know, I unzip this and then I can get into the bag see what's in there. Maybe when I'm at home and I want to get, you know, way down to the bottom of the bag, I'll unzip it. But I would say I probably use this, I don't know, once a day, maybe, um, maybe not even that. Whereas this one, I'm constantly in and out of that top flap 
here. But still, it's very nice for when you do need access to this bag, and I think it's a great sort of solution for that. So, moving on to the interior of this bag then, now that we've got it open, um, you can immediately see, like, first of all, it's very easy to see inside of this bag. Let me see if I flip it around like this, you can see. Um, and so, let me talk about what I have uh, in here, first of all in the main compartment, and then I'll talk about the pockets of this bag, and then I'll show you a couple of loadouts. So right now, inside of the main compartment, I just have a pair of gloves, um, and then I have a Bellroy uh, classic pouch here. And I deliberately chose the classic pouch because this is a pretty small uh, bag. And so we'll talk about this in a minute here, but like you want a smaller pouch that will kind of fit in there. Otherwise, you're gonna run into some of the access problems with the water bottle pocket that I showed earlier. And then I have like a little echo bag, you know, this kind of pops out. It's like a bag if you go grocery shopping or whatever. <clears throat> Let's set that aside over here. Um, then that's really it for the interior main compartment. And then let's talk about the pockets of this bag. So the first thing you have is on the front inside flap, you have a zipper pocket. Um, this is the only zipper pocket in here. The zipper pull is, I think you know, it's got a little cloth zipper pull. It's a pretty small zipper pull. It's a good size for what it is. It's made out of this elastic mesh, um, which is used in other Bellroy bags. And I think it's a good mesh, like it's not, it's slightly see-through, but it's not like, you know, super see-through. It's not a little bit of resistance, but it's not like super hard to kind of pack in and out. Um, it's also not super droopy. Inside of here, I have my wallet. This is the Bellroy Apex wallet. Um, I have some AirPod Pros and I have uh, a coin pouch here. Um, I find that this pocket, this front inside zip pocket is a little bit tight or a little bit small. I wish it were either, um, further down or there were another one or something somewhere else, another zipper pocket, because I find that, you know, the things that I want to keep secure, but still accessible, um, don't all fit in this pocket. Okay, next, let's talk about the other interior pocket on here, which is this sidewall pocket, which is uh, elasticated here at the top. And you can see it's on the left sidewall of the bag right here. And inside of here, I have a pen, uh, this is a James Brand uh, Benton pen. I have uh, some field notes. I have my phone. And then I have uh, some chapstick and some alcohol for, you know, sanitizing your hands on the go. And that's really it. Now, I'm glad that this pocket exists. It's, it's a little bit, I think it's a, the same kind of uh, mesh as this front pocket, but due to the way that it's sort of constructed as a, like a bit of a, you know, I guess like drop-in pocket, it feels looser than this main compartment here, or this main zippered uh, compartment here. The problem I have with this um, pocket is that it's not very, it's not tall enough that everything falls into the bottom. So it sticks up a bit, right? So if I were to put my phone and my field notes in here, you can see like, it's just sort of poking up at the top. If I put the pen in there, it's sort of just poking up at the top. And I put my chapstick and my um, alcohol in there. Obviously that fits in the bottom. But then when you drop the bag on the side, I've had, like, you know, as you might drop the bag down, like I've had stuff work its way out, especially like pens or whatever will just fall out the top because there's enough space when the flap is closed. It's gonna be hard to show this on camera, but if here, here is where the top of the pocket is. So when the flap is closed, you have all this space where a pen or whatever, small things can work their way out when the bag is horizontal. Couple that with the fact that the flap opens very easily and you can obviously see why there's some concern about how secure things are in here. I also find that I'm just overloading this pocket. I wish that there were one more sidewall pocket here, but there isn't one, presumably either because of this quick access pocket on the outside or because of the sidewall zip. I don't know. It's a little bit um, frustrating. I just wish there were one more pocket somewhere. Um, the interior pocket somewhere. The other parts of the interior of the bag are the laptop compartment in which I have a 12 inch uh, iPad Pro and then the front tablet compartment here where I have a Kindle, some masks, and a toothbrush set. Um, these have no elastic on them, as I've mentioned at the top, and so that makes it a little bit hard if you're trying to cram like a thicker laptop and there's just no give in there. Um, I put the 12 point or the 12 inch iPad Pro in the laptop pocket. It's supposed to fit up to a 16 inch uh, a laptop, which is true only I think if you have a 16 inch MacBook Pro, any kind of thicker computer is not gonna fit in there. Um, it'll also comfortably fit like smaller things like a 13 inch MacBook Pro, et cetera. And then this front part is supposed to be for a tablet, although it's not gonna fit a bigger tablet like the iPad Pro 12 inch iPad Pro, It'd probably fit like an iPad Air, I think. Um, 
they're fine, I think. I just find them a little bit tight. And again, that's partially the result of the fabric um, interior of this bag. This has a little bit of friction and the lack of elastic. You can kind of see how, you know, this is already bulging out and then you get like this weird kind of bulge simply because there's no elasticity or give to the fabric. It's just really, you're fighting against that. So this is what I would consider like a typical loadout for a bag like this, of this size. Um, but you might be wondering to yourself, well, what if I wanted to carry something slightly more, something more than like a Bellroy Classic pouch? So I've already showed you very briefly what happens if you take something larger, like a Evergood's Civic Access Panel, Civic Access Pouch 2 liter. It really does fill out the bottom of the bag and it does fit to be fair. And it actually probably will, well, no, it's not gonna stand up. There, it'll sort of stand up like this. Um, and it gives you this nice kind of shelf to put stuff in. So on the one hand, it fits really nicely in there. On the other hand, as I mentioned, you lose the functionality of the side water bottle pocket. If you were then to take something like headphones, a bulkier item, these are the Sony MX WH100 M4s or whatever, I forget what they are, I'll put, put it in the video. Um, it fits in there, but now you've really seen, we've, first of all, we've got this big square brick and well, besides the fact that the pocket is like this, like it's really kind of filled up the entire capacity of this bag. You can see we're up at the top here. So definitely doable, but it's really pushing the limits of this bag. And for accessibility, you're gonna have to really fish your pocket out, take this thing out or whatever. Um, another thing that people might wanna carry inside of this bag is something like a layer or something like this. This is an uh, Arcteryx Adam LT hoodie, I believe. Uh, it'll fit in here if you don't have the headphones and closes up, it's fine because it's a squishy kind of down layer. The thing that I found is it is very easy for the top flap to come open if this bag is overstuffed. So this, because it's squishy, is probably okay. Again, like this is probably the limit of how, well, it is the limit of what you can carry in this bag. You can see it's like packed out fully. Um, you can see some of the rounding that I mentioned in the back panels when the bag started to be filled up like this. Um, if you were then to try and like, for example, cram some headphones in at the top like this, right? So now we've got all these things on here. You're gonna run into this problem, which is you can fight the magnets shut like this, but they'll pop open like at any kind. I didn't, sorry, I didn't mean to like do like that. In practice, like I found that, yeah, there we go. Like as soon as you put some flex on the, um, on the shoulders when you're wearing it, it just pops open. So overstuffing this pack is because of the weakness of the magnetic closure is not gonna be a really good prospect. It's also kind of, you know, a little bit fussy. And this is probably honestly more weight than I would want to start carrying on these kind of insubstantial shoulder straps here. But it can be done. You can pack out more stuff in a bag like this um, if you would like, uh, you know, depending on your preferences and your carry styles. But I would probably not take much more than kind of what I initially showed you and maybe like the headphones or something like that. Yeah. So, you know, to sum it up, like, I have mixed feelings about this bag. Um, I like that it's big enough, just big enough for the lighter loadouts that we carry in this kind of, you know, modern era of COVID and all that. Um, I like the overall kind of understated design. I do like the ease by which you can get into the bag and the kind of fact that you can get in deep into the bag with a side access panel. Um, I don't like the lack of pocketing. I really think it needs another pocket on the inside and like another pocket on the outside or something or another zippered pocket somewhere for your valuables. Um, I don't, I'm not crazy about the fuzziness of this bag and I kind of wish that the top flap weren't quite as fussy as it really is. Um, but I can see myself using this uh, in, at least in my weekly rotations for some time, at least until this COVID situation dies down and my loadouts start returning back to like more normal kind of weights and sizes. Um, at which point I'm fairly certain this bag is going to be replaced um, with another bag that's just a little bit more organized, a little bit more like well executed. But I do like the size of this bag. And if you're looking for kind of like a dialed out, not a dialed out, if you're kind of looking for like a smaller sized urban use bag for your lighter loadouts, I definitely think that you should consider this one because it is actually a pretty good option for the money, um, in my opinion. So if you're in the market for a bag like this, what are some other bags that you might want to consider? So the first bag you might want to consider is the Heim Planet Commuter Pack 15 liter. So this is a traditional roll, roll top, um, top access bag. Uh, so you can see it just rolls open like this. It's got a magnetic closure, uh, sorry, like this. 
and then it just rolls up and you run the top, top strap to close it. So, you know, traditionally you can get in the back of the top like this, but much like the um, Bellroy Melbourne pack, it has a side access zip, so you can get into the main contents of the bag from the side without having to undo the top. Um, you can't get into the laptop compartment from here, however. Unlike the Melbourne pack, you do have a fair amount of external pocketing. Well, no, you have one large, I should say, external pocket. And it's sort of interesting. Like you can actually see like this front external pocket is floating. And the reason why is that you're supposed to be able to run a jacket through here and just drape it over the top like this. So when you're, you know, bicycling or whatever, it's just sort of draped off the top. Um, it's kind of a cool feature. I've used it a couple of times in practice. Um, so usually these days I'm wearing my jacket because it's a little bit cold outside. Uh, it doesn't have a ton of internal organization. There's just a single laptop compartment. Uh, and the back here, as mentioned, it's sort of, uh, you have to get in from the top to access that. The backpack straps are, they have, there's a sternum strap and they look, I would say cooler, but I mean, by which I mean like you just have like Hypalon accents and that general kind of Heim planet interesting construction and materials, but they're not particularly substantial. Again, these are all packs that at this size range, maybe you don't need like the most robust carrying system. You can see again, that kind of distinctive Heim planet design and kind of, you know, Hypalon accents and aluminum hardware and all that. So I, I like that. Um, there's also an optional hip belt you can add to this thing, which I don't think you really need on a pack this size. Um, might be a bag to consider. I would say it's a little bit less handy for like keeping stuff organized. Um, but it is a little bit handier in some other ways, especially if you're like a bicycle commuter, because this is, a, for example, a much more secure um, closing system than the uh, Melbourne, in my opinion. <clears throat> Another option to consider is, again, in the kind of roll top, top access, smaller bag. This is the Minol uh, roll top. So what you gain with this one is superior exterior, ac exterior pocketing. As you can already see, there's two really fairly large with some dimension built-in pockets on the front, but inside of each of those, there is also another uh, side, another internal zippered pocket inside of each of those, which is super cool, actually. I was not expecting, I thought there was just one on each side, uh, but there's another one inside of there. The, um, sorry, there's also a, a secret kind of pocket in the back for your phone or passport or whatever, which kind of like, this one already has the same, I can tell already has the same problem as the Melbourne and that you have the stiff frame sheet problem. Um, you also get a kind of nifty, you know, front opening, almost like a mystery ranch tries it, but you know, differently, you know, roll top, quasi roll top, but also deep access um, kind of hybrid, much like the Melbourne pack, which is kind of cool. This bag, as you can see, fillets way open, far more than the Melbourne pack. Um, you get a couple of additional pockets on the inside here. Um, one inexplicably, and I found this with a lot of Manal stuff, has like a key leash on the inside bottom of this pocket. I don't understand the concept behind that. Um, anyway, and then sort of like a single laptop compartment in the back here. Um, I think that what you gain besides the maybe superior access, superior pocketing, um, is uh, uh, that's what you gain with this bag, I would say. So superior pocketing, superior access. What you maybe lose is that I find the roll top with these kind of um, you know push types a little bit fussier. I don't think the build quality is as good on this one, actually, to be honest, as uh, on the Bellroy pack. And then it's weird they try to do this hybrid thing where you can you know disconnect the um, shoulder straps and tuck them away. I don't understand the reason behind this on a bag of this size or nature. Maybe it's so you can fold it flat and put it on the bottom of your bag, but I just feel like this was like a fussy, unnecessary detail. It just adds weight and complication. You do get sternum straps on here. Um, the shoulder straps honestly aren't anything to write home about. I would be hard pressed to say, but I'm guessing the Melbourne one, the Melbourne Belroy shoulder straps are better. I haven't used this bag too much though, so I don't know for sure. Anyway, the Manal roll top bag. Um, Bellroy themselves actually uh, have done a couple of different variations on the kind of roll top, top accessing pack. This is their studio pack. It's a cheaper bag. It's an older bag, has superior um, organization on the X outside, meaning there's also like some pockets and stuff in here and it zips up. I don't like that the one pouch, the one zippered pocket is on the outside, but you know, it is deep and relatively secure. Not a magnetic closure, but kind of one of those little, you know, push types in there. Fidlocks, not Fidlocks, I don't remember what these are actually called. Um, and then a couple of, there's a zippered 
pocket on the inside with that same kind of mesh you can see as the, um, let's see if we can get it to show like this, the same kind of mesh as the um, Melbourne pack, uh, and then another laptop compartment but no tablet compartment. No external access to the inside volume from here. The shoulder straps are a lot less good, <laughs> for lack of a better way of putting it. Um, Overall, I would consider this one an inferior bag to the uh, Melbourne, but it is cheaper and it does have, you know, like I said, better external pocketing organization. So that's something that's important to you. It might be worth um, checking out. Oh, I forgot to mention this one also has um, a sidewall, uh, two pockets, one on each interior sidewall. No external water bottle pockets as well. Another one from Bellroy is the Apex pack, which takes like the same concept as the uh, Melbourne pack and just really, you know, amps it up to whatever the price point is on this bag, like 600 US dollars, something like that. This is one of their, this is like their, their top of the line pack. Um, you can see already you have kind of some magnets here that ape what we see with the, um, with the Melbourne pack. You have not one, but two, uh, panel so you can completely fillet this bag open. You're gonna see the same concept of a laptop compartment and then a tablet compartment. And then you're gonna see not one, but two sidewall pockets. All of these are elasticated, although the elastic is very, very tight on these in general. I found that very constrictive to use in that way. Same kind of mesh. Uh, you get one similarly very small um, uh, mesh zippered pocket here. I wish that this one had another zippered pocket and then like a top, you know, two, two pocket, you know, kind of magnetic closing one. Again, some of the same issues that you see in the Melbourne pack, you actually see in here and that like, there's not a lot of secure stuff. So this pack doesn't do well when it's horizontal, like things will fall out very easily. It doesn't feel very secure. Um, but on the other hand, you know, uh, there's just more of them. On the other hand, this is a $600 bag. So I would expect all those issues to be resolved and they are not. Um, you get two external side pockets um, quick access pockets on this bag. Uh, one of them has a key leash in here. And then you get a much better, though not perfect, um, I think backpack strap situation. The sternum strap that I probably hate the most out of every single bag, out of every single bag I've ever re reviewed, I probably hate this sternum strap the most because of just how chunky it is. Like it's this um, weird little thin nylon cable connected to like these white, things that are tacked on. It just makes no sense at all. Um, the backpack, uh, the back panel is a very interesting kind of thicker foam, um, but uh, rel relatively supportive. Anyway, um, if you really like the style of this, it might be a bag worth checking out. So really, that's it. Um, if you have any questions about this bag, go ahead and leave those in the comments below. And if I can answer them, I will answer them. And if you have a pack that you would like me to review, go ahead and leave those in the comments below. And if I own it, I will review it. Thank you very much. Well, first and foremost, um, I can recommend, I don't know if I recommend, I recommend you look at this. This is the, min, no, what is this? This is the Heim Planet Transit. Uh, no, it's not, let me start again. This is the Heim Planet uh, roll top bag. No, sorry. Okay, I got it. I remember what this is now. This is the Heim Planet commuter bag, 15 liter. I'm sorry about that. I should probably edit that. Let me try that again.